Well, before he settles down to address me, mm. Joshua comes to knock on the door. My husband screams, Why are you knocking on the door? Don't you know that people are sleeping? Joshua goes, Michelle, Michelle, Nicole is in labor. <laughs> I told Byron the help, bring me my basket. She mm. brought it. I told her, bring that. You know those little tables in the yeah, living room? Yeah. Bring. I stepped. You know how big my dresses are? Mm -hmm. I jumped through the window. She passed me my basket. I ran to the car. I opened it. What? Put the basket in. Wow. Entered the car. Didn't even lock the door. I told Marion. You know like how you have a shower? Mm -hmm. And you put your rings over there so you can, you know, yeah. do everything. Mm -hmm. And then you put them back. Every time I'd have a shower and leave my rings over there mm -hmm. to wear them in the morning, I'd get woken up. I've talked about the law, that's how I know, yeah? Mm -hmm. It would wake me up. Like I'm in deep sleep, eh? Wake up and put on your rings. He <laughs> starts with pressure. I'm tired, you people, I'm tired of you in this house. You do not respect me. You must leave this house. So you were telling us about the never give up. Yeah. You met with your brother. He's asking you how you are. How are you? Mm. Tears came. I looked away. So he asked again, are you on Mark okay? I told him, yeah. Mm. We are fine. He said, good. In my heart, I was thinking, I'll tell you one day. Mm. When the now. time is right. When the time is right. So we went. Did never give up. Yeah. Returned to our respective homes. Mm. I found... My husband at home, rewatching mm. the show. And that okay, <laughs> no okay. problem. Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Mm. When he came to the room, how dare you mm. go on national telly and present me like a bad person? And then I sat down and I asked my brain, brain, did we talk about him? At what point? At what point? Mm. But you know, he went on and on and on. That girl talking about me, I'm sure she's talking about me in the entire church. All of you people sitting there, because now it's me, Robert, Blair, Pastor Roland, all of us ganged up on him. Yeah. I kept quiet because I was used to accusations. You know that thing they say, of, if the shoe fits, wear it. Yeah. Oh, because that's what he was doing. So, Robert phones me one day mm. before the meeting he's scheduled between the three of us. Mm hmm and he says, Michelle, are you sure you don't want to meet up with me before we meet up all three of us? Because your husband told me a lot of things. Mm. I believe there's two sides to a story. Mm. Are you sure you have nothing to say? Like, do you want to meet up so we can discuss? I said to him, no, I trust you mm. and I trust my God. It's okay. We don't have to meet up. And this is your brother and you have not told him. No, anything. no. So he's like, okay. Mm. So the day comes. It's mm. actually a Sunday. We finish with church, keeping mm. up appearances. Mm. Now we come to meet up. My brother comes over. Mm -hmm. As is the norm. Because remember, I've been avoiding counselors, right? <laughs> yes. Hey. Time to give a review. You see me, I'm good like this, like this. This one is bad like that, bad like that. And you know... I like this meeting because it gave me an insight into how this person is. Because at some point he's telling my brother, and then she, I, I saw in the dream, then she did this, she did this. At some point my brother asked, is this in reality or in the dream? Hmm. He goes, in the dream. <laughs> so so I, I, see, I see my brother sit back Confused. like, oh, oh, oh dear. Hmm. In my head I was thinking, aha, uh -huh, now you know. 90% hmm. of my faults start with the dreams mm. yeah so anyway we carry on we carry on you know sorry he talks and talks and talks and talks when he's finally done mm -hmm. robert turns to me do you have anything to say michelle i said to him just one thing he says uh-huh i said to him robert i'm glad that now you know mm. i'm glad that you know what's been going on mm. in our marriage because I never once did I ever bring myself to tell you 
then I reminded him that, do you remember last week on Nev before we went to Never Give Up? Robert says, yeah, I remember. I asked you if you uh, and everything oh, at home okay. is okay and you yeah. told me everything is fine. I said, there you go. But this is how mm. my husband feels. What I wanted my husband to know was, you have it all wrong. Mm. I haven't told anybody your name. Mm. I haven't said anything to anyone. You're, 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 you're stripping yourself naked in right. the junction like right. King Saul in right. front of the prophets. Yeah. You know, you're embarrassing yourself. Mm. So by the time he goes to meet whoever, mm. he's going to defend himself. Like Let me defending tell you how himself and yet he's just stripping himself. Narcissists naked. are special people. All they ever they ever care about is them appearing as good. So when he comes to you, he throws around a lot of words to make himself look okay. Everything that they do is from I am good. Mm. I am. They believe that they are I am. Do you know that this was the nature of Lucifer that led him to being thrown down here on earth? Mm. Like God said, you they can't be two kings in heaven. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. You go and be with them. Because they, they can't help mm. putting themselves up there. Mm. So when he watched us and never gave up, he assumed that there had been a meeting about him. Mm. And he's like, oh my God, I must run and defend myself. Mm. But where he's going to defend himself, there's no case. Yeah. So in the end, he's just presenting his business there on the table for all to see. Right. So I said to my brother, this is how my marriage is. Mm. And I remember um, my brother asking another question like, but is there love? Mm. He's asking this gentleman. Yeah. Like, is there love in this gig? In my heart, I was thinking, good question. Because when you go for counseling and you love a person, you go to look for advice and ways Solution. of how to unite as opposed yeah. to but because for us, it was always like a case court. A case, a case case court. court. Yeah. This is a what she's done. A <laughs> court case. This is what she was done. This is what she's doing. This she's bad. She's mm. bad. She's bad. So he asked, my brother asked, is, is there any love mm -hmm. in this gig? And um, the gentleman said, oh, yeah. I love my <laughs> wife. Wow. I love, I'm thinking, yo. Anyway. What was the other thing my brother said to us? And did you reply? What did you say? I don't remember if I replied, but I know I could not have lied. Mm. And then um, my brother said these words. You know what, guys? You're big people. Whatever decision you make, you need to know the implications. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor in the, in the sight, sight of, of the Lord. God, yeah. When you choose to separate, expect your favor to fall by half. He mm. gave us such good counsel. I like him because he's very spiritual. He gave us such good counsel that when you separate, expect the favor to go down by half. Mm. If you've been driving a car um, automatically at yeah. a good pace, mm. if you separate, it will now be the speed of someone pushing a car. Mm. So you have to be ready for that sort of thing. Otherwise, you, you're big people. You know. So when he gave us that advice, I said to him... Um, must have taken a lot of... Uh, he must have been like really... It takes someone who is uh, intelligent emotionally, mm. Mm. like someone who has wisdom to actually take this matter with so much grace. Grace, Because remember, this is your brother. Yeah. He loves you very much. Yeah. And he's not really siding with you. Mm -mm. He has seen the kind of character, mm -hmm. the, the kind of person that this mm. man is. Mm. Mm. And he's not, you know, attacking of, mm. oh, Michelle is my sister. How could you do mm. this? So he's fun. not taking sides, but he's just staying neutral and counseling you with so much wisdom. If there's one thing I can, um, if there's one thing I thank God for, mm. and one thing I can advise the ladies, number one, know the Lord. Mm. Number two, surround yourself with people that know the Lord. Because mm. that's the actual hedge of protection. Every person this gentleman went to was deeply rooted in spirit. Mm. Because I can imagine if you went to a person that didn't have the heavenly wisdom, mm. you can see the drama that can when erupt. they called you and start to accuse you. This is how people hang to... themselves. Mm. This is how things go really nasty. But anyway, that was our meeting. Okay. So after I gave um, them my two cents, mm. uh, all, I ever, all I said in that Excellent. meeting was, Robert, now you know. Mm. And also, have I ever told you anything about him? Robert said, no. Mm. Like, all of, all of this is new to me today. Mm. I said to them, so do you guys mind excusing me, please? 
because I didn't want the meeting to go on another four hours. I remember even when I was talking, uh, he tried to come in. Everything I said, he tried to come in, like a court case. And then Robert was like, can you, because you finished, is it okay if she speaks? So when I finished, I knew that he would have to speak again for another hours to go back at the top of the throne. Mm. So I said to um, Robert, is it okay if you guys excuse me for a second? Robert said, it's okay. Downstairs, I ran off to the car. And I couldn't wait to give my mom gossip. I called and I said, I guess what? Mm. This is what has happened. I feel so good. I told her, I finally understood that silence is golden. Yeah. I sat through this thing and I said nothing. And I watched my husband expose himself. Mm. I watched the Lord expose who he is in front of my family. Mm. Please note that this is not just my brother. He's my dad. He's like, he's the head of our family. Right. Yeah. He's the one that succeeded my dad. Yeah. And I'd never gone to him with anything. But this gentleman helped me to paint a picture of what I've been going through in the mm. last three years. So for me, that was heaven. Mm. I waited for them. They finished talking their business. He came to the car. He was quiet <laughs> all the way. <laughs> me, I had the winner's smile of, you fucks. Come peace. Thank you, it. Jesus. Thank mm. you. It was heavy on me. Because remember, I've had my divine encounter and I've been given the go-ahead. But I also have voices of, what will I tell so-and-so? What will I tell Robert? Because, mm. you know, mine was a big wedding. There's a lot of people that I'm answerable to. Those that matter anyway. Yeah. So, we, we finished the 72 days of fasting. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor Roland has invited us to his dinner mm. to break. He didn't know we were breaking our fast. Yeah. We knew we were breaking our fast. And the night before, the Lord had given one of us a message that, look, guys, I am sanctifying you. It mm. is in John 17 when Jesus is going back that the word will sanctify you. You know, when Jesus is leaving the apostles. So we had all the, the messages from God that this wasn't a random cookout. Yeah. Our pastor just felt like food. Us guys knew we were coming to mm. an end of something special spiritually. So, you know, we go over... Something special for me as well, the something, end. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Something special for you because you're waiting to have your baby. Yeah. You're all like these mm. big belly mm. and big legs and everything. So, when we finished that... Um, eh, did I tell you how I made it to that? I almost did not make it for that... Um, the, 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 cool. the lunch the cookout make it uh, like leave home i almost didn't leave home to pastor roland's house mm. because now uh, my husband starts to ask me where are you go tomorrow you will not leave this house whether you want it or not oh it has reached to that point now yeah they either hide the key or they lock me up or it's a bargain to leave mm. the room mm. whether you like it or not it is a saturday you're supposed to spend the day with your husband you're not going anywhere mm. i said to him i'm going to seek the lord I had learned to speak with authority because now I knew who I was in Christ. I wasn't yeah. a timid wife. So I said to him, I have to go and seek the Lord. Mm. I've been on a fast. I'm completing my fast. I have to be at prayer mountain. Ah, oh, yeah, the devil is very, very kind. Yeah. Because but now, this is the last day. This is the last day for you to get to the finish line. And the devil is trying to attack you so that all those 71 days just go fall to the ground no, like this. Now. And I have wow. to keep my calm. My cool. anything that you do would really ruin all the, all, all the, 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 everything that has happened in the spiritual realm. And you know, 71 days. remember before that, my mom used to call me and tell me, Michelle, I just had a vision. You're walking and there's wires above you that have to stay straight. If they mm -hmm. join, there'll be a short circuit. So stay right. focused. Don't lose your temper. Right. Keep your connectivity to God. Keep right. your connectivity to God. So but now all, he's mm -hmm. infiltrated her. So she's not supporting me and I'm walking alone. So all this time, if you've been up to here, mm. if you dare do anything, you're going to go back to where it all, you, all, you started from. So I, I tell him, I have to go. I have been fasting. Mm. This is the last day of the fast. I have to go. I go to the bathroom. I have a shower. He's seated here. You're not going anywhere. I have to go. So I dress up. I trust my Lord. What time is this? Morning time. Okay. 7 a.m., 8 a.m. He's not he's showing signs of leaving for work. He likes to lounge. Mm. When he was at home, he's a lounger. Yeah. So I finish dressing up. I stand by the bedroom door with my basket. You know my basket where I keep my Bibles? Yeah. And I look at him. 
And in my spirit, I'm saying, in the name of Jesus, you will open the door. Mm. And I'm looking at him. And um, I don't know what else he said. Next thing I know, he's opening the door. I'm thinking, yes, Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> I get out. I need to pack some pans. Because mm. there's many of us, I need to pack some ingredients. It's a to big cook. deal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, I'd packed them the night before, mm. and I got the help to put them in the boot of the car. So now it's mm. just me and my basket. Mm. I'd learned how to live a life on the go. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I get to the front door. It is locked. Mm. I was like, "Devil, you're a liar." I asked the help, "Where's the key to the door?" Mommy, we always keep it by the shoe rack. I don't know where the key is. I'm thinking you're joking. Today, even if it means passing through the what? What are they called? The, the ventilators? Yeah. Even if it means passing through the keyhole, I will make it to the final supper. Mm. I will make it to the final supper. And then she said, should we ask that? I'm like, no. No, 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 no. Wrong number. As in, I had to f- find my way out mm. of the bedroom. Mm. And that's an achievement. Oh, so he opened the door to the bedroom mm. knowing full well that the house is you're locked. not going anywhere the house is locked and i have the keys so i'm walking around my brain is in overdrive mm. staring through the window and it occurs to me like voila we have french windows i can fit in this window <laughs> no i told Byron the help bring me my basket she no. brought it i told her bring that you know there's little tables in the yeah, living room yeah. bring i stepped you know how big my dresses are. Mm-hmm. I jumped through the window. She passed me my basket. I ran to the car. I opened it. What? Put the basket in. What? Entered the car. Didn't even lock the door. I told Marion, open the gate. Slowly. Open the gate. What? I started that car and boom, out. You must have had the car. <laughs> I told oh. Josh, because he was part of the gig. Mm-hmm. I told him, you will find me at the church. Mm. when you're ready i can't wait for you here because mm. i don't want to be stopped what? i drove out of that fence like a mad woman Zoo, all did the way to the... no so that's what i can tell him that it is him that did it he's very smart he will not own up wow so i sat there waited for josh to come mm. he walked all the way from home mm. to where i'm hidden and yes. we drove off to um pastor rollins mm. hey so Story of my life. Anyway, we finished the last supper. Mm. Remember how that gentleman prayed for us? Yeah, I remember. I remember. Mm. He sent us out. Mm. Go out and minister and experience the, he said, he said, go and see the blessing of the Lord that comes with favor. Something along those lines. Mm. I remember someone came to visit him while we ate and he said, yeah. to, and then he said, these are my disciples. So for me, I'm so quick to always relate everything to scripture. Like, okay, mm. this is the last supper. After this, I'm going to serve. Because you're constantly in, in the, the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I come back home. Mm. Now, First of all, you ran away. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Now you're coming. But Oh, by the way, I'm ready. I knew how to prepare for these things. Mm. I'm ready mentally for whatever I have to sit through. And um, I take my time, have a shower, have dinner. Because mm. I know there's no peace in the bed. You found him home? Yeah. Okay. There's no peace in the bed. Yeah, I took my time around the house. And after I came to bed. Now for him, remember, he likes to watch his TV. And, mm. and then you can hear him dragging his slippers coming. I'm thinking, here we are. Father, this time make it 20 minutes, not an hour. I'm mm. beginning with the Lord. He comes in. No. Yeah. Before he settles down to address me, mm. Joshua comes to knock on the door. My husband screams, Why are you knocking on the door? Don't you know that people are sleeping? Joshua goes, Michelle, Michelle, Nicole is in labor. <laughs> <laughs> Saved by the bell. <laughs> wow. I took, I got mm. out of that bed. I started that saved to you. Eh, that I was thought, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 11 a.m. Mm. Not 11 a.m. 11 no, p.m. in the night. Yeah. I began to pray for that baby like, the, like I was the one going to give birth. Mm. Packing clothes. You know. And in my mind I knew it's, it's, it's what day of the week was it? When did you give birth? Was it a Saturday? Monday. No, no, no. It was a Sunday. Oh. So I gave birth. On I went Monday. to the hospital Sunday night. Huh? So I gave birth 
Monday morning, in the wee hours of the morning. So it is Sunday night. It is mm. dark mm -hmm. that you pop baby Eli. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, Monday I always do a shoot. Yeah. For my YouTube. Yeah. So I start to pack. By this time, you know, I have a lot of jewelry. I used to like to hang it by the wall mm -hmm. so I can know what to wear with what. Mm -hmm. But because I'm always shooting and home is not a home, so I keep my jewelry in a basket. Mm -hmm. So I jump out of the bathroom. I get the jewelry basket. I pick like four clothes. And he's saying, where are you going? To hospital. My <laughs> daughter is in labor. You heard what Nicole, you heard what Joshua <laughs> said. Like, surely are you going to sit here and talk for one hour? And the girl, so I had to do actions like, you know, she is in labor. She's in pain she's bringing a human being into this world yeah. so it's important that i go mm. but he's thinking and why are you packing all those clothes mm. you know i shoot every monday <laughs> so when i come from hospital i might pass by you know the shoot and mm. i make it out of the house peacefully mm. so we come to hospital yeah and you had your baby Mm. And we have to keep you company. And you guys were in the hospital for days. For days. Yeah. Day and night. Mm. That baby was my deliverer, man. Mm. I know that baby's age because it's, it, it's the exact amount of the months since I acquired my freedom. <laughs> okay. Mm. So, we're discharged from hospital. <laughs> I've been reminded of the story of Moses, how Moses was born to deliver <laughs> Yeah. To deliver the children your child of was born to deliver me. I take your baby very <laughs> seriously. The by the way, of Israel, that's, that's why I love him. Mm. That, that Elisha is my deliverer. Mm. The Lord sent him to me. So anyway, so you're in the hospital for days. Four and days. It's time to leave the hospital. Time to leave hospital. Mm. But we could not come to my house yet. We went yeah. to your house first because I think us guys have just had a fumigation. Yeah. We don't want a single mosquito to bite baby Moses. Mm -hmm. So we had to go to your house first. Yeah. And now, you know, he calls. By the way, he calls every day. Mm. That's how I know that either half the time or most of the time, he didn't know the effect he was having on me. Yeah. He was just being a normal husband. Right. Yeah. Who has his rights? Right. The law. You are my wife. This is mm. what you're supposed to do. Mm. So anyway, I um, we go to your house mm. for a good couple of days. Mm. <laughs> so you haven't been home in like a week? Mm. Like, mm. A week or so. There's something I've remembered that's funny. Yeah. You know, like how you have a shower mm -hmm. and you put your rings over there so you can, you know, yeah. do everything. Mm -hmm. And then you put them back. Every time I'd have a shower and leave my rings over there mm -hmm. to wear them in the morning, I'd get woken up. I've talked about the law. That's how I know, yeah? It would wake me up. Like I'm in deep sleep, eh? Wake up and put on your rings. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am your wife. I'm it's here. night time. Yeah. I am here. Mind you, he used to phone the help. I found out later. Mm. And ask every evening, is she still there? Mm. Yes. What time did she leave? Eight. Did she pack anything? Did she take any items? So this man, he knew mm. that I was about to leave. He knew. He knew. So anyway, he would, he, he would get really agitated if mm, I moved yeah, the rings for yeah, half a second. Yeah. So anyway, after we come home with you. Mm. And um, for those of you baby. who don't know, in, um, in uh, the African, African culture, when a woman gives birth, mm. she goes to the parents' home for a few days to, you know, to be attended, to help with the baby, to help her as well, because there's so much to do with the healing process and, yeah. you know, all those things. So usually so we, I can go back, you. Uh -huh, mm. we go back to, uh, you know, the, the girl's family for a few days until until you're well and ready to be on your own and then you go back to your marital home so now this time i'm in michelle's house because i'm your mommy yes anyway mm. we come back with our baby and you he was and um you have to use the other room mm. the guest room and um because this baby cries for two minutes mm. Is asleep for six minutes and awake for four minutes. You, you know, you're a new mom, all mm -hmm. of that. So I have to sleep by your side. Yeah. So, you know, I put a mat by your bed to take care of you when I have to carry the baby so you can catch a, a wink of sleep, mm -hmm. all of that. 
So I didn't go back to my room because I was now seeing you. Yeah. And I remember him asking me, so you mean you're going to sleep in that room? I'm thinking for that reason she came, mm. that I may nurse her. Mm. Our room is all the way in the east wing. If I come this way, how will she hear me when she needs me? Because mm. me, when I sleep, I totally black out. Yeah. By the way, it's true. The Lord gives his beloved good sleep. I've never loved sleep. Mm. Even if the volume is high and I'm asleep, I will not hear it. It's like my spirit goes to heaven <laughs> until morning. Mm. So I said to him, I need to be able to hear her when she calls. So yeah. I'm in the same room as you for some time, mm. maybe two, three weeks. And at that time, I'm not leaving the house. So yeah. the car altar has moved to the house mm. constantly in the word. Yeah. At that dining table, you're breastfeeding, we're sharing the word. Everyone that needed me to share the word would have to find me at the table. It's me, you, and Amos and Joshua, yeah. constantly in the Bible. Yeah. And then, one time, we're there, my brother calls him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His dad is in hospital. Mm. So I go to see the dad, he's in ICU. His dad, my dad, my stepdad. Yeah. They go to see my dad, he's in intensive care. And, you know, a week later... Again, Ian contacts me. I think he's leaving. You need to be here real soon. Mm. But that morning is interesting. The day Ian's dad passes away, our dad. You wake me up early in the morning to tell me mm -hmm. that you don't like the temperature of the baby or you saw the baby's nose run mm. or something along those lines. Mm. And I, I think at the time, my husband was a country or something. So... We dash off to hospital because you're concerned. Yeah. That is my baby okay? Is my baby having flu? Yeah. So when we go to the doctors, you tell me a dream that you had, I think, mm. about my husband. Like the spiritual realm was so active. Yeah. And I was thinking, ah, Nicole, worry not. Mm. I know what's happening. The Lord is in it. Yeah. It will be okay. Amos leaves us for a few seconds mm. to go pick us pick up some items because now we are all babysitting you. Mm -hmm. And I hear a voice. It's me and you in the car. I hear a voice. It is time. This is a, it's a Friday morning. Mm. It is time. Eleventh of August. Mm. It is time, Michelle. It is time to leave. And this time round, I didn't fight it. I don't know how. I turn to you and I say to you, you know what, Nicole? It is time for me to leave. Mm. Amos comes back to the car 20 minutes later. Our kabozi has changed. Our conversation has changed. And I'm saying, listen, first close the Bible. It is time. Mm. It is time for me to leave. That's the voice that I'm hearing. It is time for me to leave. Mm. So now, <laughs> Amos turns and says, Michelle, are you sure? And it is time. Yeah. So, as we're driving home, at about 11 a.m., that's when we get the phone call. Ian's dad has it's passed. passed yeah. So I leave you guys. I put my message on hold mm. and I run to my brother because, because he, he needs, needs you. Yeah. So, you know, the hospital, I saw this whole, you know, whole process. And when, you know, last time I visited, the man mm. had tubes in him. We had hope. We prayed. I even led him to repentance, even though he was in a coma. Mm. And now I'm standing with, the, with my late dad in a room. No one's there. The machines are off. The screens mm. are off. Dee -dee -dee, dee -dee, nothing. Everyone's minding their business. And this gentleman has the let, has a shit rolled over, over him. him. And I thought to myself, but what's the point of life? Yeah. One minute this guy was a prominent doctor healing everybody. Now we're standing here. So I have so many emotions and thoughts inside of me. And thank God my brother is so strong. And as I'm there with him holding his hand, he's doing a good job of being a brave man. His um in laws, his um wife's siblings. Okay. Those guys have teamwork. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you guys challenged me in your marriages. Mm. They show up like in four working seconds. Right. Next thing I'm seeing Penny's brother and who and who. And I'm thinking, how did they get here so fast? Oh, wow. Mm. And, and everybody takes over. Mm. So um, I sit at the reception of, you know, that TMR hospital in Nauguru. Mm. It's very, very fancy. Mm. 
So I stayed at the reception <clears throat> and um, I start to cry. Freely. Mm. <laughs> Tears really? down the cheek, down the boob, all the way. Mm. And um, everyone that looks at me expects it. Yeah, because... You I just, just lost my dad. Yeah. But me, for the let, I'm relieved because mm. we prayed. Yeah. I know he's resting in a good place. Yeah. But the thoughts in my head are, Lord, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. Because if I leave this place and you are not there, but the voice is saying, but I've said go. Okay. And I remember thinking, don't think about the how, the where, mm. just go. And then I said to the Lord, listen, I'm going to my mom, Auntie Esther. Yeah. Remember, by this time, I'm not talking to my other mom. Yeah, yeah. Because she was mom. infiltrated. Yeah. I don't want to confuse her. She's already having enough mm. drama as it is. Mm. I'll go to my, my late mother's sister. Because mm. she plays a very big spiritual role in my, my life. Let, yeah. Your real mom's sister. My real mom's yeah, sister. Yeah. And I'll go to the dad that you gave me. Mm. <clears throat> I will speak with them. Why so did I choose those two? Okay. Mm -hmm. My auntie, mm. Auntie Esther, she's very spiritual. Mm. She counsels people in Namirembe Cathedral and, you know, marriage mm. couples and things. She knows. In fact, after Robert counseled us, he said to me, Michelle, have you spoken to Auntie Esther? Mm. She's so good at this thing and she'll pray for you. Talk mm. to her. And I was thinking, there's no way I'm... You know, my thing was so painful that I was so protective of other people. I'd say, ah, I don't want to bring her into yeah. this drama. You don't want her to yeah, bear the burden it's, it's, of... It's, it's, it's very, very slippery. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's not a, an easy path to listen to this gentleman. So I said to myself, I'll go to Auntie Esther. Lord, if it is you... Mm. she will be aligned because remember she's never had a single word my prayer was like this i'll go to auntie esther lead me on what to tell her because mm -hmm. there's been a lot look here we've been here three days yeah. this must be the 100th episode yeah lead me mm. on what to tell her what she tells me if mm. she agrees with me i'll know that you're in this thing yeah and then i also said to the lord i'll go to that dad of mine that you gave me because all the times i've seen him is always sending me back to that house yeah so I was done with my crying for the let. Yeah. And I called. I said to Ian, Ian, in fact, Ian said to me, Michelle, you can go. Even me, I need to go home, freshen up, cut my hair. Because after here, it's, you know what happens it's when you lose a relative. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have time to mourn. You have to organize things, look okay, because it's going to be a hectic three days. So he says to me, go home and rest. I'm thinking, dude, I don't have a home. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I drive off to my dad. I, I call my dad. I tell him, Daddy, I want to talk to you. He said, okay. I asked him, where are you? I have been invited as guest of honor at a football match in my <laughs> region. So, mm. but you come. I'll step out and speak with you. Vroom, I drove to Kazo from Tinder. I got there and I told him, it is time. You know what he told me? Mm -hmm. I know. What? <laughs> like, because I knew he said, my daughter, I know. What? He told me, I know because I'm your dad. Mm. I don't want to send you back. He had experienced an incident where um, there's a time when my husband needed us to move because he believed that the house where we were living was cursed. Mm -hmm. That's why the marriage is not working. <laughs> and he didn't consult us because that was his nature. Wow. Mm. He went out and looked for a new house. And he told us, we're moving his nature was, he gives you a few days. Yeah. We're moving. And I'm the only question I asked him is, what about my son? Because this is close to the school. Yeah. He said, well, I'll get a house close by. Just know we're moving. And then he went ahead to call my mom. Because now he knew that because me, I have a curtain over me. Mm -hmm. He has to speak to my mom to speak to me. Yeah. So when he called to tell my mom that we are moving, my mom happened to be near my dad. Mm. And he, he had the whole then. conversation. Yeah. And he sent me, he called me and told me, my daughter, I had that man. I had, I don't know what you're staying with, but 
it is not healthy. Yeah. It is not good. He's, he's mm. almost as if treating you as baggage of Yeah. Because I think he told them, we have to move. I'll move them even if Michelle doesn't want. With time she will get used to it. I have made a decision. Eh. Mm. So anyway, I come to him and I say to him, it is time for me to leave. And I'm looking down waiting for him to say the grace of the Lord is enough. He says, I know. Mm. I've been praying about it. I know. That's when he tells me about that phone conversation and everything. Okay. He said, um, I know. And um, I'm addressing you as my daughter because I don't want you to die. Mm. And I think two weeks before one time when we were headed to church, something happened and I was in that car waiting for my husband so we can go to church. And I, asked, I called him and I asked him that, excuse me, do you guys want to pick up a coffin from this house? Mm. You and that mother of me, you people that God gave me to parent me, the angels that I asked for. Matthew 11, would you rather pick up a coffin? Yeah. Because I keep telling you what's going on and you're telling me all of these things. Mm. So this time around, he says, I know. It is okay. Mm. But that, this is what I need us to talk about. Where are you going? Yeah. Because I'm looking at you as a daughter. I'm not going to watch you die in a marriage. Yeah. I didn't tell him anything about the, the divine visitation that I had at Serena and everything. Mm. I was just addressing each person individually just to see what they would say. And then he said to me, I'm going to pray for you that you, the Lord directs your path okay. wherever you're headed because it's very, very sensitive and important where you're headed after here. And then I remember saying to him, I'm going to the Lord. Mm. I don't have anywhere else to go. I don't have a job. The Lord will provide Mm. The space that I am in right now, it is the Lord. He said, okay. So he prayed. After getting his green light, mm -hmm. I call Auntie Esther. You know how busy she is. And she says to me, I tell her, Auntie Esther, can I please see you? There's something that I need to share with you. Yeah. And she's like, wow. Okay. Why are you? I mean, Kazo, why is he? She says, come. Yeah. I'm at home. Come. I thought, wow, that was easy. Because for her, you know, you always have to make an appointment. Yeah. yeah. So I come in and I sit with her. I think I only gave her one or two incidents. Yeah. Even before that, when she, she welcomed me into her home mm. and she hugged me. Mm. Every tear that I ever kept mm. came flooding out. Then I told her, I have to leave. Mm. So she told me, just tell me a thing or two. And I told her, she started to panic. Mm. And then she told me, no, 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 Michelle. You can't stay in Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> I think she went into panic mode. <laughs> you know, you have to move countries. And I said, it is okay, auntie. Mm. I came into this marriage on instruction. I am leaving on instruction. If he didn't kill me whilst we were sharing a pillow, yeah. he can't look for me elsewhere. Uh. So I'll be fine. What was her other question? Mm. She made this. The, when I was telling her a thing or two that had gone on in the past three years, she told me, today I have confirmed that you're really born again. I've counseled so many people and no one sits through that. Yeah. And I told her what the Lord has always told me. It mm. is not me mm. that was in that house. Mm. It was the Lord. I'm just a vessel. So, you know, she was so sad and she prayed for me. Her prayer was so beautiful. Mm. I really love spiritual people. She said, dear Lord, his bones look so dry. Wow. They're so dry. But when um, Jeremiah asked you, when you asked Jeremiah, can these bones receive life? Was it Jeremiah, Ezekiel? Mm -hmm. When the Lord asked Ezekiel, can these bones receive life? Ezekiel's answer was, God, you know. Yeah. So she prayed along the lines of, Father, these bones look dry, but you know. Mm -hmm. So I'll send off my daughter because you know. Oh. Poor lady, she went into her room and she gave me some money. Aww. 
So I assured her that everything would be fine. Would be okay. mm. And I was so happy. Because mm. now I had enough voices. Yeah. I had many voices, by the way, in my alone time. But I didn't want to follow the desires of my heart. Mm. So it was important that I meet the angels that the Lord sent me at the Serena. It was important that I get my mother's voice. It was yeah. important that I get my father's voice. It as was important yeah. that I get my auntie's voice. So as I drove in that car, I remember phoning Amos and saying, it is officially time. Mm. Everybody that has to know, mm. I have told. I mean, my husband helped me with Robert, but here we go now. So I came home to you yeah. and I said to you, listen, I have to go and take care of Ian. Mm. But the Lord, I think about the Lord so much and I tear because I have lost a dad. I am leaving my marriage and I'm as energetic as a ball. Mm. So I said to you, Nicole, I'm here with you tonight, but please not. Ian needs me now because as you know, we don't have a mummy. Yeah. Mummy passed away. Ian's mom passed away. His dad has passed away. I have to play mom. Ian's wife is out of the country. She's, she's in England at the time. So I have to be there for Ian. And I, again, I want to thank God so much for this marriage because it taught me to be selfless. Yeah. The previous Michelle would say, oh, I I'm have tired. My issues. I'm going I'm through, with you know, I'm dealing yeah. with my issues. And now I have to baby a big boy. Mm. But the Lord was so quick to make me forget what I'm going through. And I went into, you have to be there for Ian. Yeah. And I also want to thank God so much for Amos. Yeah. Because he was put there at a time. The right time. The right time when I needed somebody to walk with me every step of the way. Because mm. again, every time, when you're in labor, Joshua came with me. We found Amos and said to Amos, listen, it is time. Mm. Nicole is in labor. Two seconds he was out of his house. Yeah, at night. <laughs> at night. Yeah. 11, 11 p.m. Mm. So now I call him and I say, my brother has lost it. We, we've lost our dad. He says, pick me up. He was always, ever ready. Mm. There's a scripture that I like in Galatians. It says that it is the Lord. Mm. Paul is talking to, was it Titus? It is the Lord who establishes us in people's hearts. Mm. So Titus, go and minister. But the Lord is sending you so and so to help you. But that person is coming to help you because... It is in their heart. Yeah. You're not forcing them. Yeah. Because not now I'm ministering with Amos. I don't mm. pay him a coin. He mm. does it because he's serving the Lord. Mm. But he goes above and beyond mm. even when there's a family crisis. Mm. You know? So anyway, Amos is like, yeah, we go. Funeral yeah. time. And I remember you saying to me, Michelle, so now you're going to leave me here. When are you coming back? Remember, just when you had the baby, Nicole, you became a baby yourself. Mm. You, you used to tell me that I don't like to be alone. So for those two weeks, there was no ministry. We were simply ministering to you and baby yeah, Eli. Yeah. So you're so used to our company. Yeah. And now you're saying... Also, because I didn't want the postpartum depression to, to come in. Exactly. So I was trying to really stay positive and have a good, like, envi a good environment. And also because we used to really be in the word a lot. Mm. So really postpartum depression kind and, of and you'd had your that. episode yeah of um what happens in that house mm. you know yeah so anyway off we go mm. for funeral but when i went to that funeral i knew for a fact i was leaving because you left you, you were there for two days i think three we thought it would be two days yeah but we ended up staying. I went on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm. We ended up staying almost a week because it was extended. Yeah. So funeral, same story. So now we've come to the funeral and we are guarding Ian. Mm. <laughs> you know, our funeral comes with so much drama. Yeah. Especially when the let mm. had, mm. you know, a lot. Handling a lot. Yeah. So we're always in the word. Mm. All is praying. Mm. So I um I think I informed another person or two that I thought had to know about what I was doing. But by this time when I was informing these people, I wasn't asking for permission. Yeah, just that F Y I. Why? I. I remember one person going in shock because they were out of the country. Michelle, you can't. 
You simply cannot. Oh, I knew, I knew about this. I should have spoken to you before leaving the country. Can you wait for me to return so we can talk about it? I remember saying, I respect you, I honor you, but I pray that the Lord speaks with you mm. because I feel like, and here's the other interesting <clears throat> part. You know all the kids that I used to meet up with in Bible study? Yeah. The Lord told some of them. <laughs> the, the people. Kids. Yeah. There's one specific girl. She knew months before. But every time she would come to me and say to me, Auntie Michelle, are you fine? I would say, yes, I'm fine. Mm. And she knew. It's like every time she put down her head, her spirit would go to my house. So wow. one time I said to her, okay, maybe I haven't been well mm. a thing or two. She told me, I know, even when I was at school, God used to show me, I saw you, you were trying to minister, but you were locked up in a room. What? And when I asked you, why can't you come out and minister to us? You'd say to me, he has the key. Mm. He has the key, so we can't, uh, so, you know. And then this girl was upset, but can't she see that ministry is important? Mm. So I told her, I, I told her, like, listen, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord knows. Yeah. Anyway, funeral ends. Mm. It's time to come home. By the way, at the funeral, he came. God bless him. He came. Like I told you, he has a sweet side. Yeah. He came. And, um, you know, there was very many people. Mm. And when he came, he phoned me and asked me, where's your brother? Mm. I told him he was standing around the grave area. But, you know, funeral service began, everything ended. And when we got up after the body has been lowered, I tried to look for him. He had left. Yeah. And my husband has, had left. So we stay because you mm -hmm. know what happens. Those that come to Bari, they leave immediately. Yeah. But you, the owner of the business, you stay for a bit. Yeah, of course. And I was not about to leave. Your brother. All by himself. Yeah. So I stayed much longer. Mm. And I asked him, do you need me to spend the night? He said, no, Michelle, you've been here long enough. It is okay. And because um, we were sleeping in the car. Mm. So he... um. It's time for us to come back home. Okay. It is me, Josh, Amos. Yeah. We leave Mokono at about nine, I think, mm, ten. Mm. The phone calls begin. Where are you? Because he 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 knows that the, 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 the funeral ended a long time ago and he's home. I'm not about to reason. You see, that is my father that just passed away. So if you can just hold on for a second, there's no mm. reasoning. Mm. I said to him, we're coming home. No, he asked, are you coming back today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. I'm legally married to you. It is the law. Mm. This marriage ministered so much to me about the law versus love. Eh? Yeah. Anyway. So we start to drive back and um, we're in the word. Mm. Revelation. The book of mm. Revelation helped us a lot. And the Lord is saying to us that, listen, angels are very many. One angel has represents about 50 million warriors. Mm -hmm. It is somewhere, horsemen. It is somewhere in the book of Revelation. And we're there reasoning and thinking, oh, so when a person has very many demons, it's a legion. Mm -hmm. But as a person, if you have one angel concerned with you, you have 50 million people mm -hmm. fighting for you, mm -hmm. you know? So we were exchanging all of this. And remember, I had gotten to a space where I understood that it wasn't my husband that was like this, but a spirit that's upon him. Yeah. Because I, I went through a phase where in the morning he's being nice. Two hours later, he's not nice. Yeah. Three hours later, like. He's nice, yeah. So I, I, I remember coming to an understanding that, oh my God, this is a legion. You never know who is coming. Mm. So whatever manifestation comes, I have to be on stand, yeah. on standby. So this teaching from the book of Revelation, I think it was talking about the 144,000 angels. Mm. So my mind was set for whatever I'm going to find at home, whatever manifestation, they that are with me are more yeah. than what I'm going to encounter. We got to that house. I don't know if it was just before midnight or midnight. My husband is the one that opened. Not the help. Now mm. that's a rare occasion. Mm. No, I knew it was. He was soup. waiting for you. Oh, very badly. Mm. <laughs> Later on, I asked the help and she told me, Daddy told me at 9 a.m., you go to bed. I need to handle these people myself. Mm -mm. Yeah, it was real hot soup. Mm. So he opens the door. The gate. Mm -hmm. I get in. Me and Josh. Like I am not ready. Yeah, you he were had not ready. fumes. Mm coming out of him. 
Wow. How can I come for the funeral and you do not greet me? I'm like, okay. I'm the one that lost a dad. I'm the one that's all over the place. But I'm supposed to leave everything and I come and I attend to you as opposed to you coming to comfort, comfort me. Yeah. Sorry about your loss. Mm. So he starts, he starts with Joshua. I'm tired. You people, I'm tired of you in this house. You do not respect me. Mm. You must leave this house. Mm. In my head, I'm thinking, do you know what your mouth is projecting? Yeah. We are leaving anyway. Yeah. But remember, I can't reason with yeah. him. He must, he's so upset. So I get in, I try to have a shower to freshen up so that I can sit properly. And it gives me nicely for two hours, as is the nature of our marriage. Mm. He doesn't want to know. Leave the bathroom door open. He is talking and he is so upset. He's even pacing. You know, like when a person is in the spirit praying, that's mm. how he was. How could you? He's talking and talking and talking. And I'm thinking, Michelle, today, Father, are we making it out of this house? Are you still here? Because I thought like, this mm -hmm. is it. Anyway, when he pauses, I decide to fall asleep. I don't decide. By the grace of God, I fall asleep. And um, But I could hear. Yeah. You know, when a person is... Heaving, they're mm. so upset. Yeah, but I slept. I slept and nothing. Were you afraid to sleep because a person so pissed like that? That Weren't is you why. afraid that they would do something? Jesus in me. Oh, I had a dream in that in the last five months of my marriage mm. that Jesus came and slept on our bed. Our marital bed was so cluttered. There was so many things, and then he came and slept there. So now I had that mindset of whatever is going on in Jesus this room, in this yeah, marriage, yeah. Jesus is in this boat, mm. you get. And uh, it's proof because the kind of anger that he was exhibiting, and I'm so little over there, he could have just put his hands around me. Yeah. But he did not. Yeah. yeah, so I knew God was in it. And I actually got to a space where I would feel sorry for him because I don't know if he understood what, what was, was happening yeah. in this whole equation. Yeah. So... I slept. But boy, as soon as this eye opened the next morning, mm. he started again from where <laughs> he had stopped. Wow. But because this had been the nature of this relationship since he found out in 2022 mm. that I know the spirit that's operating behind him, there was never any peace again. Now we're talking August. So I, I sat down and listened. And after, when he was done quarreling, he asked to make love. I offered my body. Right after. It was always like that. I offered God. my body. But I remember thinking to, to myself, Jesus, if you knew at some point you had to leave the cross, eh? mm. this is the last time. Yeah. And he was done. Thankfully, it wasn't a long one. I went and had a shower. Mm. And from that moment, my mind was in parking mode. Mm. I'm looking at the bathroom. What is mine? What is not his? I started to look at the house in the, what's mine? What is not his? And when I came out of the room, he had locked me in the room. Mm. And I never know where the key is because he, until he has released what he has to say. Okay. Until he gets peace. Yeah. He will not open. Yeah. He said so many things, but what I remember vividly is um, him and I had um, started up a company together okay. when we first met, and he, he asked me, so this company, I feel like you're too busy with your good business, mm -hmm. and um, you don't have time for it, I need someone that's committed, do you want me to remove you as partner? Mm -hmm. I told him it's okay. Mm. I thanked the Holy Spirit. And then he said, and these signatories, uh, Maureen and Nicole, should I remove them? I said, please, mm. find peace in being the sole owner of that company. You mm. can remove us. It's all right. He said, that's settled then. Yeah. Okay. And then he goes ahead to say, by the way, I had a dream. Mm -hmm. But you know, by this time, every time he said I had a dream, I had to pray first. Yeah. This prayer of, Father, if it is of you, I receive it. If it is from the other side, I'm not in agreement with it. Mm. So until I, I said that prayer, that's when I'd say to him, go ahead. Yeah. I dreamt when you were asking me for a pass. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you said to me that you're going for, you're going to work, Kazi. You know, the Lord speaks to you in a way that you understand. Mm -hmm. Because of this guy's line of work, everyone that's going to start working, they have to first go through yeah. that, 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 that camp. Mm -hmm. So apparently me, I asked him for a pass. 
because I was going to the camp. Okay. And it's telling me, damn right. I am out of here. I am going to work for my father. Yeah. Thank you for all the work that you have done. But I could not speak with him because he could not understand mm. the language that I was speaking. Mm. So I told him, okay. And then um, I'm waiting for him to open for me. Mm. And then I had a moment of looking at him straight in the eyes. When he was, because he always, he was always sat on the bed, leaning against the bedpost and doing all of this talking. And I'm standing by the door holding my basket, which carries my Bible and books. And I said in my spirit, I held my neck high up with so much confidence. And I said in my spirit, look at me closely. Look at all of me, because this is the last time you're seeing me. So when he was being abusive, I would say in my spirit, say all the words you like. Mm. This is the last time you're talking down on me or any woman. Okay. And when I finished that statement, mm. he stood up and opened for me. Mm. I got my basket and walked mm. out. Okay. That, that was when I walked out of my marital bedroom. Mm. Bedroom, okay. And now it is a Tuesday. Mm. I have to go and minister. Yeah. Never once did I take a day off of serving when I was going through all of this. Mm -hmm. Why? Stay diligent. We were doing the book of Acts at our family altar. Yeah. And I noticed that after Jesus left, every time the disciples were disturbed, taken into jail, yeah. were doing good, mm -hmm. when the angel of the Lord came and let them out, he said to them, go back to the temple and speak about the word of God. Yeah. Go back to work. He always said to them, go back in the presence of the mm -hmm. Lord. So for me, I knew with the kind of life that I'm living, any minute outside of the word, I will die. Mm. I will drown. Right. So we finished this little drama, picked up my basket, <whistles> Tuesday, youth altar. Yeah. I want to thank the Lord. Never once did I miss a day at that altar, mm. despite everything. When I came to the altar, one of the guys, he called me outside and said, I saw. Mm. I said, you saw? Yeah, last night I saw in a vision when you came to the altar, you had all of your belongings in your car. What? <laughs> what? So I asked him, he told you? Yeah. He told me, he has been telling me. Mm -hmm. That what? That you're about to leave. Mm. That it's almost time for you to complete your training. I hugged him. You know, at this point in time, I needed people that were aligned with the instruction. Mm. Anyone that came to me outside of the instruction, cut him. Mm. So anyway, we went back to the altar. And um, that day, mm. the altar was also super special. Okay. I had some money, 200,000 UGX or 150 yeah. that Ian had given to me. Mm. And um, I, um, we, 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 we got a guest at the altar. Remember now in my mind, I know one thing. Today I will go house hunting. Yeah. The Lord has asked me to leave. Yeah. And I said to Amos, look, I lived, I had a very nice life mm. before I entered this instruction. I don't serve a load of, retro, of retrogression. So when I go to look for a house, I'll find the house of the same standard. Yeah. I am not finding a 100,000 house, I'm sorry. Because all I had was 150K. Yeah. I'm not going to find a house for 100,000. I'm going back to the standard that I know. 1.5. Mm. Too much faith. So we come to the altar with Mike a little mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So you know we're there, we're in the book of, was it Leviticus? I don't remember. We've done a chapter trying to discuss the nature of God. A man walks in okay. at the youth altar. And um, he says to us, I'm, I'm suffering from cancer. Or is it yeah. a, I have a blood flow that does not stop. And um, I, I went to a clinic mm. over there and they said to me, I need to go to Entebbe Hospital mm. so that I can be helped. Mm. So, and he's saying to us, he doesn't have transport. Mm -hmm. A voice said to him, enter that room, the Gilgal Center. Yeah, where you fellowship. Yeah, where we fellowship. And um, the man says, we say to the man, look, silver and gold we don't have because at mm. this altar we don't collect money. All we bring is our Bibles, mm. notebooks and pen. Mm. But what we have we shall give to you. Mm. We're going to pray for you. Okay. You'll be fine. You won't need any operation. And we believe in the word of God. Yeah. So 
he stands in the middle, we stretch our hands and we start to pray for him. Mm. After praying, or whilst praying, I get convicted, like, give him 50,000 UGX, I'm thinking Jehovah. That's the only money. We have to find a house. <laughs> Why are you asking me to give the only money that I have? So when we finished praying, the man says to one of the boys, he whispers to the boy, and they go to the bathroom. And me, I go to the car to look for my money. So I bring the money. So the gentleman comes back. When the gentleman comes back, he says to us, I have something to share. We ask him, what is it? When you were praying, the blood stopped. Oh, glory to God. The blood flow stopped. He had a pad. He mm. showed it to the other boy. Mm. Wet, soaking. He said, it has stopped. I don't know what's happening. So I said to him, God we believe powerful. in the healing power of God. Amen. And we believe the Bible says that he sends forth his word and his, and his word heals them, them and delivers them from destruction. Mm. So we believe that you're healed. So it's mm. your duty to believe. And then I said to him, you know what? I feel convicted to give you this money. You can use it as transport to go to hospital <sighs> to confirm that you're healed. Mm. So the Lord was so beautiful. He confirmed to us that he is there. Yeah. Now me, I'm here in my personal drama thinking, okay, you've given him a miracle, I need a miracle. You've asked me to give him my money, I need a house, I need somewhere to go. Anyway, all of us collected money for the boy, and one of us, I think, bought him a Bible. Nice. So we gave him the word of God, and he left, very nice guy. We have pictures of him. Aha. Uh -huh. When the altar ended, I said to the kids, normally I stay behind and we fellowship in the yeah. world until, you know, evening and then we get into the service or whatever. I said to them, listen, I have an urgent mission. I have to go. Yeah. We started the journey of house hunting. 